Welcome to Peabody Access TV's uh, 2020 annual meeting. My name is uh, Tim Spanos, uh, Chairman of the PAT Board of Directors. Uh, with me is John McGinn, um, Finance um, Chairman. Uh, we also have members Bob Champagne, Lou Sasosmo, and the Secretary to our Corporation, uh, Matt Moak. Um, and uh, it's been a very difficult year with, uh, with COVID-19, um, but PAT through its staff, um, Camille Bartlett and Natalie Mega and Jim Palmer uh, and staff have all done a magnificent job uh, keeping PAT up and running. Um, it's been a very, very difficult year and um, I'll, I'll let um, Camille work into that and um, so I'd like to introduce our executive director, Camille Bartlett. Thank you, Tim. Um, good evening, everyone. Things certainly have changed since the last time we met. Um, so much of this year has been about attempting normal, and our community has been very creative in doing just that. From birthday and senior class parades to virtual gatherings and graduations, we've adapted. Peabody TV closed to the public in March, but staff has continued to work, and when it is safe to reopen, we will do so. In the meantime, we ask for your continued patience as we navigate what we expect to be a challenging winter. Thank you to my staff for their work under less than ideal circumstances. Natalie Mega, Don Murphy, Courtney Kent, Jim Palmer, Josiah Bedrosian, and Stephen Valenti. You have all risen to the occasion. Along with my board of directors led by Chair Tim Spanos, I couldn't ask for a better support system. We're particularly lucky to have the expertise of our treasurer, John McGinn, on our team, especially as we plan for a future of diminishing revenues. Thank you, Camille. Um, I'm, I would like to give a brief uh, financial report on the status of uh, PAT. Um, I begin by reporting that um, in, we operate on a calendar year, and in calendar year 2019, which are our most recent complete year, we had revenues totaling $966,312 and total operating expenses of $787 and $787,842. That in, in calendar year 2020 results through the end of October, uh, we, we have collected revenues of $695,650 with total operating expenditures of $632,061. PAT uh, is a nonprofit um, corporation, is audited annually by a CPA accounting firm. We utilize the services of an anesthesis and company um, who is licensed CPA firm here in the state of Massachusetts. They completed the audit for 2019 uh, fiscal uh, financial activities and will do so again in for calendar year 2020 when it's completed. Um, we are, there are no major problems with the audit. The audit reports are on file at the, the PAT offices. Um, PAT currently has total assets with a value of 2,700,000. $89,139, and uh, which includes fixed assets, cash, et cetera, and liabilities totaling $123,662 as of the end of October 2020. During calendar year 2020, we had the unique um, situation because of the COVID-19 um, situation where the federal government uh, made nonprofit or, um, corporations eligible for the PPP program, the so-called, which stands for Payroll Protection Plan. Uh, th this allowed us to navigate um, the um, costs associated with um, salaries and certain uh, utility costs during that period. And, and PAT was awarded a, a grant of, or a loan of 95600 dollars, um, which we will be eligible and intend to file an application for loan forgiveness uh, later this year. Um, 
PAT has been involved for the past 10 years in a multi-year capital planning process. And, and in this year has plans for capital expenditures totaling $319,856 with capital expenditures through the end of October totaling $51,000. $436. Um, PAT annually adopts a operating budget for the year that we're currently in 2020. Our operating budget totals $922,950. And we are in the process of developing and we'll have one by the end of 2020 for calendar year 2021, uh, which the board will take action on at its December meeting. Thank you very much for your attention. While the rhythm of life has been disrupted, the work of our community marches on with a huge boost from technology and Peabody TV. Production manager Jim Palmer explains. That's right, here at Peabody TV, we pride ourselves in staying on the cutting edge of technology. And it's that very technology that's allowed us to stay operational during the last several months as the COVID-19 pandemic has set in through the community. The first such example is with government meetings, where at the beginning of the pandemic, they started to transition more into a Zoom format. And it was through that format we found we were able to capture that signal and broadcast it live, allowing community residents to attend more meetings than ever before. We've been averaging over a dozen meetings per month lately, and we've covered over 100 this year. Several hundred hours worth of programming has been created as a result. And as the meetings transitioned into the summer months, we found that as restrictions loosened up a little bit, we were able to create a hybrid meeting format. And that format allowed residents to attend the meetings virtually, have their voices heard, maintaining that clear and transparent democracy. We also formed strategic partnerships with the IT departments, both the school and the city, helping us to form a triangle of technical expertise to not only train city officials on how to conduct Zoom meetings, but also make sure they get broadcast and sent out to all the residents. Thank you, Jim. 2020 has also been a year of accomplishments. Um, RCN cable subscribers can now watch our access channels in high definition for the first time. Peabody TV has also continued its winning ways. We will leave you with this clip of our national and regional award winners. Until next year, we wish you and your loved ones good health and peace. Good night. So what do I have in front of me? You have our fish tacos. They're very light, white fish. We marinate it with our own seasonings. We just grill them with uh, pico de gallo with just a little oil. Then it's lettuce and chipotle mayo on top. This is unlike any fish taco I've had before. It's super light. And that chipotle mayo is unbelievable. That's, that's, right that's this one, okay. You know, I love all my enchiladas. These are the enchiladas that I always recommend to my customers. I'm really proud of the PBD District Court, proud of the access to justice that we've had. Here we are right in the middle of PBD Square, right across from City Hall. It's a great location and a lot of great things have happened here over the years. The District Court is the court that most people within a city use. You know, there's about 10,000 cases, 10,000 people who have to use this court in this general location. Well, that pretty much hits almost every family. City elections are all about local candidates, your neighbors, your friends, that are running for office to serve you. Everything that you have for quality of life starts here. The people you elect make a lot of important decisions, from the mayor right down to the commissions. In city government, you actually engage with your elected officials. It's unusual for a city of its size that there is so much access to government. Just the fact that like I'm going to be playing 
there and mm-hmm. I used to look at that venue when I was selling the t-shirts and like one day I'm gonna play there and yeah it's gonna be sick Olio is a modern industrial event space that we are renting out for folks to use for weddings and celebrations, for corporate gatherings, for nonprofit galas, even for things like fitness classes. We hope that people can come in here with whatever idea they have and make it come to life. Having it here in the George Peabody House it was kind of symbolic in a lot of ways because George Peabody cared so much about education, investing in youth, and I think that's what we're doing today. We're, we're taking a step towards investing significantly in the Children's Museum that will inspire, motivate, hopefully educate many, many students and, and, and young boys and girls coming through our doors here. Our historical community, which a few of them went first, were a little nervous about making some changes here, uh, but I think everybody's going to be very proud of what we're doing here. A normal day of this is going to be, we'll start off with a PowerPoint presentation where we'll educate the kids on the basic laws so they understand what they're getting themselves into. Followed by that, we'll have some practical app stations where they'll be able to use the go-karts that you've seen here today. They'll dry run it, which means they'll do it normally without any goggles on, and then we'll put a set of goggles on them and we'll see how they do. Um, 10 out of 10 times something's going to happen. They're either going to hit a cone or they're not going to be able to stack the cup correctly or they're going to step over the line and it's going to show that they're impaired. And that's the goal behind the whole thing. It's been a huge journey for all of us, not just me, just for my family. It just takes and takes and takes. Hi, Mom. It started probably earlier than we think, so it was very difficult to understand. He was a very smart man my entire life, and then it just started to decline. I actually peeked in that drawer before we started in his desk. There was a lot of research in there about Alzheimer's and looking up what's going on with me, you know. So he knew. He never let us know he knew, 